let's talk next about what are some of the sources of, <clears throat> of meat glue in terms of food. So where are you going to find it in your food? So number one, we'll see it a lot, AKA the name meat glue, right? So we're going to see it in processed meats. So you're going to see it in things like hot dogs, lunch meats, You're also going to see it in things like chicken. Um, some of your, like if you go to the frozen food section and you have like chicken, chicken breasts, right? I put air quotes up because it's not really chicken. It's chicken particulate or chicken nuggets, things of that nature, right? Where they take pieces of chicken, push it all together, and they use meat glue to hold it together and to form it and to shape it and make it look consistent in its structure, in its shape. And so where you'll find a lot of meat glue is in fast food type scenarios. So if you're type thinking you're buying a chicken breast as a healthy option, right? But that chicken breast is not really chicken breast. It's chicken particulate pieced together with meat glue to made, made to look like chicken breast. You're not really eating chicken breast. Or you could be eating chicken breast that's also pieced together to, so that it looks like a whole chicken breast because it was chicken pieces or, or the chicken breast pieces that were torn apart, that they use that meat glue to give it a uniform shape and structure. It's very common to see this done in fast food restaurants simply because fast food restaurants are trying to deliver a consistent, repetitive result on your plate, right? They're trying to deliver the sameness every single time. So they want their chickens to look the same. They want their chicken breasts to look the same. They want their chicken nuggets to have the same shape. And so they use that meat glue to basically to reconstitute parts of chicken in order to have that same consistent look, shape, feel, etc. So again, processed meats, hot dogs, lunch meats, any kind of fast food. If you go to a restaurant where there's a chef, you're probably a little safer in terms of meat glue. But if you go to a restaurant where there's a cook, that's when you want to think meat glue. So like think chain restaurants so where, they, where the flavor and the taste and the consistency has to be the same whether you're in New York or whether you're in Texas. Right. If you're if you're thinking chain restaurants, think meat glue as a potential possibility. And my advice to you is stay as far away from the substance as you possibly can. And we're going to talk more about some of the side effects of getting meat glue here shortly. But processed hot dogs is a source. We also get meat glue commonly found in dairy products. Now, many people that go gluten free also go casein free. And one of the reasons why is they feel better, right? A lot of times people discover that they feel better on a gluten slash dairy-free diet. Casein is the protein found in dairy. So gluten-free, casein-free diets. But if we ask the question, why do these people feel better? One of the reasons is that much of our dairy in the U.S. is also processed with meat glue as well. Again, it, it increases palatability, makes it creamier, makes the texture creamier. So think of dairy products like uh, icicle pops, ice cream, yogurts, these things that need a little bit of thickening in them. Even some of your, I've seen uh, cases where some of your, um, some of your um, uh, milks themselves, where they try to make it creamier, where you get meat glue as an additive. So if you're buying processed dairy from the grocery store, you've got to be concerned that it potentially could contain meat glue. If you're ever in question, like if you're wondering, okay, does the food that I have that I'm buying from the grocery store from a restaurant contain meat glue, then the first thing to do is if you're buying it in the package, flip it over, look at the 800 number, call the company, and ask them if they use meat glue, aka we got to give you the technical name for what meat glue is. It's really known as microbial transglutaminase. Microbial transglutaminase. Let me put an N in there so I spell it right for you. That's an N-A. Microbial transglutaminase. Again, ask if that, they use that in their processing and, and try to get full disclosure before you use the product. Otherwise, don't use it. And if they can't tell you, that probably means it's in there. If they won't tell you, it definitely could mean that it's in there. But if they're very quick to give you an answer, oh, absolutely no, our products don't, we don't use any of that. And it's probably because they have a policy internally. And so that, that answer is going to be welcomed. So again, it doesn't mean that all processed meats have meat glue. It doesn't mean that all processed dairy has meat glue, but it's something you definitely want to make sure that you're ruling out because it doesn't legally have to be put on a food label. And if you're not ruling it out, one of the things that's going to happen to you long term is you might wind up in some deep trouble 
uh, in terms of getting the exposure. So you don't want to get exposure because again, it can create a celiac-like a celiac -like reaction in the GI tract. And if you've already got gluten sensitivity, you could just be exacerbating your problem even though you think you're on a gluten-free diet. So what else are we looking at that contains the, the potential possibility of meat glue? Processed grains. So now those of you who may be new to the show tonight may not know about no grain, no pain, and you may not know about a true gluten-free diet versus a traditional gluten-free diet. If that's the case and you want to learn more about that, make sure you go pick up a copy of No Grain, No Pain or subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can learn more about that information so that you're not in the dark about what gluten-free actually should mean. But many of you may be eating processed grains, you know, the processed cereals, the processed cereal-based products, not knowing that meat glue is also added to those to make them uh, more palatable, to give them a greater texture as well. So processed cereal-based products even though they could be labeled as gluten-free again, the, the, common, uh, the common denominator would be most celiacs avoid wheat, barley, and rye, but continue to eat oats, corn, rice, sorghum, millet, and some of the other so-called gluten-free grains, even though those grains uh, technically aren't gluten-free, number one, but two, if you're eating them in a processed fashion, can contain meat glue to give you the same palatability as uh, wheat containing products. So you've got to be real careful there with processed grain based foods. If you ever go and have sushi, uh, let's see here, number four, seafoods. Processed seafoods are another source of meat glue. Again, going back to processed meats, but seafoods like imitation crab meat is a perfect example. If you ever go to sushi, uh, to have sushi, sometimes they use those imitation meats or they use meats that are pumped with meat glue to increase to increase their profitability, right? So you've got to, you know, ask the question: Is seafood another potential? And then again, the last place, and I mentioned this already, is your restaurants. If you're eating out now, if you're eating whole, real food, like if you go to the butcher counter, it's a question I get a lot. What about the ground beef that I buy that's freshly ground out of the butcher counter? No, that's not meat glue. What about the chicken breast, the whole actual chicken breast that's from a real chicken? that's organic. No, that doesn't have meat glue in it. So if you go to the butcher counter to buy your meats, you don't so much have to worry about meat glue being in the different products in the case that you're going to select. It's again, it's when really it's when you're buying the stuff that's pre-frozen, pre-packaged that, uh, that might contain this again as a thickening agent, as an additive, as a way to, to help the manufacturer of the product save a little bit of money on volume of what they're producing. So these are your main sources for where you're going to typically find meat glue in the diet. And check out these two videos right here. They might have life-saving, life-changing information for you. Make sure you subscribe so we can send you updates and click the link below. I've got a free gift for you today. It's our Leaky Gut Guide. It's a two-hour video and 68-page ebook for you. If you're trying to overcome leaky gut, we want to be able to give you a resource that's invaluable to help you on that path.